Hi, I'm Dr. T, and I'm a pediatrician. On Ask Dr. T, I answer health questions from teens. Questions ranging from safe sex, to self-love, to questions about body parts. Let's get this episode started. This episode is all about when you can't access hormonal birth control or when you don't want to use hormonal birth control. Okay, question number one. I really don't like the way my birth control pills make me feel. What non-hormonal methods can I access with ease? So my answer would depend on why you're using hormonal birth control. If it's for control of your period cramps, there are plenty of options uh, in medicinal form like Aleve or ibuprofen that can help with cramps. If bloating is your issue with periods, caffeine, or that's found in Midol, uh, can also help. If your issue is heavy bleeding or irregular periods, there aren't really non-hormonal options that can help. And then if you're using birth control for actual contraception control, so not wanting to get pregnant, the one non-hormonal birth control option is going to be the copper IUD, the intrauterine device, which you ask for ease of accessibility. And it does take a one-time encounter with a trained provider, but then it can actually stay in place for 10 years. So once it's in, that's pretty darn easy. It's just making the appointment and um, making sure that you're comfortable with that procedure is kind of the biggest hurdle. But another option that's easy to find is condoms. Um, I have made videos on how to appropriately put on a condom and measuring the size, which is going to be in the girth, so how big around the penis is, um, but that's another great option. Less consistent options, although it's still a good one, is something called natural family planning, which is knowing when you ovulate and not having sex then, or the days leading up to it. Um, I won't go into detail here about that, but there are plenty of resources uh, that can educate you. In a younger person, this natural family planning is a little bit less reliable, um, but it's also one option for you. Question number two. What is the best non-hormonal birth control? Okay, well that's a general question, and, and one of the best forms of birth control is going to be the intrauterine device. Because it is placed and then it stays in place for years. So just in general, IUDs are great forms of birth control. I'm going to tell you both about the hormonal and non-hormonal IUDs because the hormonal IUD, even though it is hormonal, it's placed in the uterus, so intrauterine device, and the hormones generally stay local. So they aren't absorbed systemically. So the majority of folks who have a hormonal IUD will only really experience the benefits in the uterus and it doesn't affect the rest of the body. So consider that. And then the other option is going to be the copper IUD which doesn't have any hormones in it um, and it stays in place for a long time, 10 years, and it works very well. And again, don't forget that condoms worn properly are a great form of birth control, easy to find, and can also help prevent sexually transmitted infections. All right, question number three. What are some ways to control cramps without birth control? This one has a lot of evidence behind it. Regular exercise when you're not on your period, and if you can when you're on your period, and then using heat packs for your cramps are two great non-medicinal, low-maintenance ways to help control cramps. If you want to take a step up and do some sort of medicine, Aleve, which is naproxen, or ibuprofen, uh, can also work very well for controlling cramps. And like I said previously, if bloating is your issue, you can also add some caffeine to the mix. Sometimes that helps. And then lastly, so generally hormonal birth control is going to be the next step up. There is something called a TENS device which stands for transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation. And these are kind of little stimulating devices that are placed on the skin that have their control to like a battery pack, but they send nerve signals into the body and it's thought that they affect and reduce cramps in a couple of ways. One way they're thought to work is that 
they send extra signals and nerve stimulation to the nerves in the area and actually overstimulate the nerves. And so it kind of numbs out the cramp stimulation and thereby reducing your perceived cramp pain. The other way it's thought that they may work is by releasing some endorphins, which are the happy hormones. So if you want to try this, this is usually one of the later mechanisms of control for serious period cramps. I would talk to your doctor about it so that they can talk to you about the right type of unit to get, how to use them, um, but they are pretty affordable. You can find ones for like 30 bucks on Amazon. So um, again, I would talk to your doc doctor about it just because there are specific um, parameters for the TENS units, but that would be another option. Question number four, does mugwort tea work for abortion? Okay, so the problem with any herbal supplement when used for abortions is that you have to use them at pretty high concentrations. And at high concentrations, you can actually cause pretty severe damage to your body, specifically the liver and the kidneys, but they can be pretty toxic when you use them at the levels that are needed for an abortion. And that's why they're not approved by the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration that approves drugs. And so we don't recommend using herbal supplements for abortions. One, the toxicity element. Two, they're not always effective. And you'll have to see a doctor anyway after you try it. So what I would recommend instead is seeing your doctor to talk about your pregnancy. You can find out if you're under 18 if these visits are confidential and private, so between you and your doctor and your parents won't find out. You can find this at www.guttmacher.org, the Guttmacher Institute. Um, and they have information on services that teens in the United States can access without parental knowledge. All right, and question number five. Is there anything that can make my boobs grow without surgery? I know transgender individuals can grow boobs with hormones, so I'm wondering if I can too, even though I was born with female body parts. So because you already have estrogen in your body, adding higher doses of estrogen to your body can actually be a little bit dangerous. It increases your risk for blood clots and it can lead to higher risk for developing certain cancers. Realistically, small amounts of estrogen, like in birth control pills, can have temporary increases in breast size, but those are usually brief and not reliable. And so what I would say is that the reason it's appropriate for a transgender individual is because they generally don't have high levels of estrogen in their body, but you've already had estrogen in your body, and that's okay. As a fellow member of the Small Breasts Club, I would say that they're not all bad. Clothes can sometimes be easier to find fits for, and a lot of individuals with larger breasts can sometimes struggle with back pain, and that stinks. So this can be a hard lesson early on, but I would say learn to love those small boobs because they're what you got and they're great. We come in all shapes and sizes, and that's what makes this world beautiful. All right, that'll do it for, what was my topic? Not hormonal birth control. Okay. And remember, if you have a question for Ask Dr. T, you can either respond in this video or submit through my website, askdrt.net.